Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very disturbing information coming out right now, something we've been following for a couple of hours but have yet not seen anything close to a uh, possible confirmation. Still unconfirmed, though, that the U.S. has allegedly bombed Syrian army in Deir Ezzard area. It's actually south of that area. Neither the U.S. Army nor uh, the Syrian government is reporting on this. Uh, the area that we're speaking about here is called uh, As Sal Haya is the name of that area. It is just south of Deir Ezzard, as you can see here on the map. There's Deir Ezzord there. Right here is the area uh, on the western side of the Syrian River there, or excuse me, the Euphrates River. Uh, of course, we have down here in the very bottom of your screen is Damascus, Isgoda, the very pro problem area that's going on right now. A lot of talk going on. And of course, you know, what really gets me uh, about all of this is the propaganda that is just flowing everywhere. As we showed you the, in our video the other day, the State Department uh, was calling for a spotlight, a spotlight on East Gouda, uh, but more specifically, they were talking about the famous documentary, what is it, The Last Men uh, in Aleppo? And then someone had the audacity to put in a comment there, and maybe a good person, I love you, I appreciate you, I don't want to say anything bad, but it's like they said, there's, they never said anything about the White Helmets in the State Department briefing there. The alluding to it, as we brought out in the video, is what was interesting. And the spotlight seemed to be all about the White Helmets. All right, so who is that last man in Aleppo that the Netflix documentary that the State Department spokesperson was talking about. Well, it was this documentary right here, Last Men in Aleppo. Uh, it is a one hour, 28 minute documentary, white helmets uniform on the guy right there, white helmets had everything. It is a documentary about the white helmets. But why are they wanting to focus on East Gota? Why do they want a spotlight there? We put the spotlight on it and what do we get out of it? Oh my gosh. Wasn't very happy with a lot of people, but it was nice to see, though, that people are starting to wake up and realize that when you see the facts that you can't refute, it's not just Brother Steve trying to tell you a bunch of stuff that's not true. Listen, I am not for propaganda. I am not for media bias. You know, I was born in the United States, raised Southern Alabama, and you know, true diehard American. But I hate to see when my country is doing things that we shouldn't be doing. Same thing with Israel. I am Jewish by birth on both sides of my parents. Their parents all were Jews. And it troubles me to see that my nation, Israel, that gets involved in things that we shouldn't be involved in. I mean, true, we look at the Six Days War, all the Arab nations come against Israel. God delivered us from their hands, right? No doubt about it. But Jesus taught, do unto others as you would them to do unto you. So we shouldn't be provoking situation that's going to bring calamity upon our people. But as Simon Tov said, those things that look like they're not that great will also help bring Israel to repentance and to recognize their Messiah. So there's a good and bad, uh, or two-edged sword, you might say, in the results of what's happening. And oddly enough, the Prime Minister Netanyahu has bombed several times in and around Damascus, but it always seems to be when the jihadists are getting their upper hand on, or the Syrian government is getting its upper hand on the uh, Al-Qaeda groups and Al-Nusra groups that are fighting there in those areas around Damascus is suddenly the Israeli government says that we have to bomb ammunition factories and, and arms depot and everything else like that as if it's for some other reason. Sometimes it is, and sometimes Israel is trying to stop Iran from getting weapons into Hezbollah's hands. I understand that. I appreciate that. Not against that. But sometimes Syrian military is being killed as a result. What are we attacking Syria for? Well, let's look at why we really are attacking Syria. Let's look at why the United States, not because of a so-called so supposed chemical attack is going to happen. If anything, we should have been a little bit smarter. Maybe we should have said, if they want to spotlight Eastern Gouda, well, they're saying that Russia and Syria is killing a lot of innocent civilians. I don't doubt civilians are dying. Do you know what they're reporting over there as well? That these terrorists that are in Eastern Gouda refuse to allow the civilians to leave. They want them to die. 
Same thing we have up in Afrin in the northern part of the country where Turkey has been bombarding uh, this little city here of these poor civilians that at one time President Trump was saying that he stood for the Kurds and would, you know, gladly help protect them. But the Kurds that are in Afrin, no, we can't protect them, let them die. Do you know the death toll in Afrin is higher than the death toll in East Ghouta right now? Wow, nobody knew that, did they? I guess not. Maybe we need to see why there is really an attack. And again, they're trying to spotlight not just East Ghouta, but they made emphasis about the White Helmets without calling them by name. Maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe because why? And we'll come back to General Wesley Clark in a minute. Boris Johnson backs airstrikes against the Assad regime if he has used chemical weapons in Eastern Ghouta. Well, you know what? Just so happens to be that uh, the news company called Al Head News, an Arabic news, is already warning that the White Helmets are planning a what a chemical attack. Every time they says in the article here that the Syrian government is making headway against uh, the jihadists in those regions there, that the White Helmets are busy preparing another theatrical uh, attack. It says here. These victims can come back to life after the political objective has been achieved. The hoax is designed to curb the Army's field of superiority. At times in Western and Arab media, outlets served the purpose of accusing the Syrian government of committing the bloody attack. At other times, the decision-making circles in the West stir it uh, craftily and with a lot of cliché. The heroes of this theatrical performance are no other than, with, without any dispute, the White Helmets. So yes, they want you to pay attention, especially if they're planning a chemical attack, because they will be there making sure they decontaminate all the victims. But I guarantee you one thing, I'm sure some of them will forget to put on their gloves once again, and the so-called sarin gas will have to be downgraded to chlorine gas, because after all, they keep making mistakes. They're just not the best actors. Maybe they shouldn't have got that prize that they won in Hollywood uh, last year. Really concerns me. But anyway, as I stated though, why are we really fighting in Syria? Was it really Bashar al-Assad was so evil, destroying his people and his country, crushing the rebellions? The only rebellions he was trying to crush were all those 35 diff different nationalists that were sent there to overthrow his country by Saudi Arabia, uh, Qatar, Turkey, and of course there was a lot of funding that come out of the West as well to make that happen. Well, let's see what General Wesley Clark said. Let me remind every Christian believer that's listening because with Israeli News Live is being attacked by other news outlets claiming to be Israeli news outlets, alternative media, for what reason? To make sure you support the narrative and back President Trump in bombing the mess out of the rest of the Syrian country and bring down the wicked, evil Bashar al-Assad. Jeez. I guess we all need good reminders, right? So let's make sure we get the volume up before we have General Wesley Clark, retired General of the United States Army, before we have him come on here, let's make sure we get the volume up where you can hear General Wesley Clark and what he's about to say. And do understand General Wesley Clark uh, graduated with honors from West Point, uh, all kinds of things. He was a whistleblower, though, to tell you what's really going on. He said he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper. And this is just, talking about going to war with Iraq. This down from upstairs in the Secretary of Defense office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran in five years. We're going to take out seven countries in five years. Now, the timeline they didn't make. Why? Because Russia stepped in. You know, the big bad boogeyman that really is causing a lot of problems because uh, they were really on a timeline schedule and it didn't work. Uh, but what countries was that, Mr. Clark? Years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finish. Did you notice also Sudan? Oh, did, you, did you guys catch the part about Syria? 
This is not Israeli News Live being propaganda for some kind of Russian news or something. You know, the thing is, is that somebody in this country, in the United States of America, that loves this country, wants to wake the people up and get the blinders off your eyes so you can see what's going on. And anybody pumping all the crap in your brain that's telling you that it's, this is not the case, that we should take down Assad, he's an evil guy. When I give you an entire panel of Americans that went there to Syria on a fact-finding mission. No, it wasn't a bunch of little, you know, uh, jihadists from all kinds of countries, Afghanistan, Pakistan and stuff, reporting back to the U.S. government and that was their sources for CNN or, or Fox or any of these other news agencies. No, it's not them. We actually had our own Americans that were educated Americans that would be objective about it with all the media bias out there, go there, such as Henry Lowendorf. I forget what Alfred's last name is, but, but a whole panel of them went there, only to come back and tell us, the American public, that we are being lied to. We are being fed a, the most incredible propaganda like no other time in the history of the United States. And then you have someone like General Wesley Clark that's willing to take and tell you the truth, a United States retired general, and you don't even want to believe him either? Is that what the point is? Many of you used to believe this. It's a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq, Iraq? Syria, Lebanon, Syria, Libya, Somalia, Lebanon, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. Sudan, Somalia, and finishing off with Iran. I don't know, guys. Maybe I'm just losing it, you know? Maybe all this is just fake news, right? <laughs> Jeez. And then of course, Turkey and Afrin. Why don't they put a spotlight on Afrin? Turkey deploys special forces to Afrin, Syria in preparation for a new fight. They're having a hard time bringing down the Kurds because why? The Kurds have been abandoning the US military over on the eastern side of the uh, Euphrates there and going to help the Kurds that are there in Afrin because the US won't do it. And, not, and it's really a shame on not only the U.S., but it's a shame on Russia as well. Russia finally did a little something. Russia put some of their military personnel on the road so the Syrian army could go up there and help protect as well. But again, what are they doing? They've attacked a NATO member. That's why probably we have this news that's unconfirmed right now. U.S. allegedly bombed Syria Air Army in Deir region. Unconfirmed, of course. All right, we make sure we say unconfirmed. This lady right here, I'll put it in there in the links for you though, but she talks about all the people that died in the first five days of Turkey's attack. It's well, I think it's like 600 already that have been murdered. Civilians. By the Turkish government. And what did, Tur what did Erdogan just come out and say on the news? We don't have to stop our operation in Afrin because after all, there's that loophole in the ceasefire about dealing with terrorists, which made sure Russia made sure that was in there because why? They're dealing with the jihadists that a lot of the nations there are backing in East Ghouta that are trying to topple Damascus from a, using a third party military campaign. It's not going good, friends, not going good. Anyway, in closing here, let me just say one thing. Whoop, it's already disappeared. Well, they don't want you to see this one, do they? <laughs> Remember the school shooting? You know, guys, let me tell you something, just in closing here. Oh, I share up, offers free gun training to 50 teachers. He has to put a cap on it because 300 of them called up and wanted to take that free training there. You know, Putin said, don't let America disarm your nation. Well, wow, that's a guy that everybody seems to hate. He says, don't let them take your guns. Why? You know what? Maybe there's some kind of sinister plan going on because maybe our U.S. government has made some kind of conspiracy uh, agreement with some kind of foreign entities. And I'm not talking about from some other country, but perhaps from some other world. Uh, and they're planning on taking over this country in a new world order. And just so happens, you being armed Americans stand in the way of that. Wouldn't that be of an interest? And some of the people that have tried to bring that out have all mysteriously died. I wouldn't give up my weapons if I were you. And I'm sure a lot of the government officials don't want to give up theirs either because they're concerned about that too. But the elite of this world have sold us out already. We might become part of the food chain. And the last thing they want is their food chain being armed. Could you imagine if the cows and the chickens were armed? 
Could you imagine when you go to round up your cows, they got AK-47s uh, and uh, all types of assault rifles, even let alone if they had shotguns, we wouldn't be eating cows very long, would we? Chicken pulls out a Colt 45. Think about it. You know, I kind of, I know that sounds kind of absurd to even say that. I remember my grandfather telling me one time, because I used to always love to hunt. And I said to my grandfather, Grandpa, why don't you hunt? He says, I will hunt when the deer are allowed to have their guns as well. When they can have a gun and they can fight back, he says, then I will consider taking up hunting. That's an interesting thought. Well, we might become part of the food chain of another entity race. That may not be so far-fetched. Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. They did eat and drink, and they were marrying and given in marriage. Remember that in uh, Matthew 24? I know everybody thinks that's just, oh, passive marriage, or, 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 you know, it's just like the way society is today. What are they eating and drinking? Oh, they were just gluttons. We know the only source we have for what they ate and drank in the times of the days of Noah was in the book of Enoch and was found in Qumran and does validate uh, that, that book of uh, Enoch that we have in Ethiopia, in the Ethiopia uh, Bible. It says they were eating and drinking human flesh. Think about it. I'm Stephen Benoon. When there is ain shalom, there is no peace. So why say shalom when we know this world is turning into a madhouse? God bless you. Pray for We pray for you guys. We really do pray for you. We love you. And thank you for being a part of this ministry and helping us this month. We really greatly appreciate that. We're headed to Europe. So many things we want to cover for you guys. We're here to expose the things that are happening in the world, to bring you the truth, to share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ, those that do not know it. Uh, I thought it was kind of interesting. We got a comment. One person said, we just kind of tolerate your religious side of it there because we appreciate the truth, the truthful news that you bring out. I appreciate their honesty. God bless you as well. And I trust that maybe uh, while you uh, weed through the religious things that we bring out, maybe the Lord will speak to your heart as well.